Hey everybody, welcome to another drive through Let's Play video. Uh, today we're going to take a look at Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. This is being released sort of as we speak right now at Gen Con and elsewhere. Uh, it's a follow-up, of course, to the original Mansions of Madness. came out about four years ago or so, I think. Uh, this one is a little different. It comes with an app that you need to download onto your phone or even onto Steam. And that will act as the keeper or the dungeon master, as it were. And so it takes care of all of the sort of the AI and the puzzles and controlling the monsters and all that kind of stuff. And the players will be these investigators invent, uh, investigating the Mansion of Madness. So let's jump into the app and take a look at that. And then I'm just going to do a playthrough of it and it kind of bounce between the app and sort of the, you know, the components on the board there. And we'll go through it and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. I'm just going to go through sort of like the intro scenario because I don't really want to spoil anything. I will spoil that, uh, but it's kind of designed as, you know, kind of get your feet wet kind of idea. So I will go through that. So there will be a little bit of spoilers, but I won't do any of the other, you know, more advanced scenarios. I will play through some of those here over the next couple of days and then do kind of a final review of it, if you will. Uh, but let's jump into the app and take a look at it. Okay, here we can see the app starting up. I just want to show you one little thing before we get into the game. You can go here into my collection. This is where you can actually add the different items that you have. So of course you've got the box game that you, we are looking at now. And you can go in here and add the first edition as well as some of the expansions. And I believe you can add that stuff right away even for the first intro uh, mission and it'll mix it up. I've played the intro mission now just one time um, and uh, fired up for fun and it actually is a little bit different each time. So it's not complete spoil. So we'll go here into the new game. You can see we've got the Cycle of Eternity. And we'll go ahead and select our investigators. I'm going to go ahead and do Agatha Crane. She's kind of a paranormal psychologist. And kind of her opposite, a man of the cloth there, Father Mateo. So we're going to go ahead and now generate a starting set of items. So we can see we've got bandages and crowbars and so on. So if we take a look here are the character cards. Here we've got Father Mateo. You can see his health and his sanity. And you've got here the stats for his different skills. This is the number of dice that you roll uh, when you do a test and a special action that he can do. Now the app also did tell us that each of these characters will get two of these clue tokens and these can be used to help mitigate uh, the die rolling. What you can do is if you roll a clue symbol, you can discard one of these to turn it to a success symbol, which is that elder sign there. Now if we look back over to the app here, we can see all of the different items that we can get, plus we get one spell. And we can distribute these amongst the investigators how we wish. So I'm going to go ahead and give uh, the Feed the Mind spell here to Agatha, because she's kind of into the occult. So I'll give that to her. The Father's a little bit of a healer, so he'll get the bandages. Uh, the Pocket Watch here is allow you to perform an additional puzzle step. Now, I don't know if it's always the case, but the lore uh, seems to be involved with the puzzle. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to Agatha because she's got a high lore, so I expect her to probably be doing the puzzles. Uh, fire extinguisher here. Let's go ahead and give that to the father to kind of balance it out. And then the crowbar. Let's give that to Agatha. So she's kind of a dangerous individual. So the items are now distributed. So we'll go ahead and go back to the app here. It'll give us a little flavor and setup information. Go ahead and begin the scenario. So the car rattles up to the estate and we pull in and we see this entry hall. So we're going to go ahead and set up now the tiles uh, based on how it wants us to do this. So we'll go ahead and put our investigators out. And then will have us put these different search and explore tokens out onto the board. So it's asking us to investigate um, some different things. So there's some noise happening here off to the right. Uh, there's some books and paintings to check out. There's a little shelf stacked here with books. Uh, we'll put a little token there and we can actually move that in front of the door possibly <laughs> to become a barricade. And then we'll go ahead and put a site token up here so you can go up there and reveal the adjacent area, but we can't quite see it yet. And then we'll put a couple more door tokens out. Now we're gonna do the investigator phase and they can operate uh, in whatever order that they want. So you can see I've set the board up as I wanted me to. I've got the different tokens out here. You typically interact with those in the app itself. But for example, I've got the little bookcases here to indicate things. And there's other little tokens like fire and so on uh, that you can add on to the board. So each investigator can take two actions. And there's a couple things you can do. Uh, I should say the rules are this learn to play guide, which is pretty simple and straightforward. And then there's a larger reference in case you encounter something. Now on the back here of the reference is um, 
all your kind of basic stuff. So this you can kind of leave up on the table. It shows you the different actions. You can move uh, two spaces, interact with these different tokens. You can talk to people and stuff, attack and trade possessions if you're on the same space. Uh, one thing to note, you might not be able to see here, but you can see like this solid line there that's indicating a space. So if I wanted to move up here, it'd be one, two to get to that. So we're not gonna do that though. We're gonna go ahead and see what all the noise is about right here. So Agatha is gonna go ahead and act. She's gonna interact with this token here and she's going to explore. You can see the explorer has a little symbol there. That means it costs you an action to do that. So she hears crash of pots and pans and is that hissing? <laughs> so she's gonna explore. And we're gonna go ahead and now grab the dining room table here, or excuse me, the dining room tile. And so now we have a creature here. The creature turns to face you. Uh, this, I didn't read before, but the creature has been chasing around uh, this other man. And so whoever interacted with this, in this case is Agatha, she's gonna suffer two horror hits. But you can see at the bottom there, it has a little symbol and it says negates. So this is a test and you can see we're gonna test Agatha's will. She's got four. So she's gonna take and roll four dice and for each success, she's gonna negate one of those horror hits. So she's gotta get two success, hopefully. We'll go ahead and roll that. And she did, she got two successes. She could have had a third if she wanted to spend a clue token. So she's not gonna suffer any horror hits. Now back to the app, uh, we have to spawn a hunting horror. So let's just go back here. We'll go ahead and put the hunting horror uh, like so. And there's a couple of little stats and things on these um, that you actually slide this little token in. And then you have some more information there uh, on the back of it. This monster can move through impassable borders. And we have a little miniature there. So we're just gonna put him there. And then the app has now asked us to put a knife out onto the table. And we're just gonna now put us, uh, some tokens out here these two search tokens, three search tokens actually. And then Eugene himself is going to appear and we're gonna put that, now we can interact with Eugene uh, once we get into the, his space. And so the investigator that did this can move one space into the explored area uh, to finish out and round out their action. You want to interact with a creature, you've got a couple things you can do. If you look on the lower left hand side here, you've got a few things. You've got a menu here, we can save and quit and look at the message log of all the stuff that's happened. We can also go back here and interact with anything that's in our inventory. And then we're gonna go ahead and interact here with the creature. So this is gonna show uh, this creature that's here. We've got the hunting horror up here. We can try to attack it, we can try to evade it. So if we wanted to move through it, and move on to the next space, we could try to evade it. But we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and attack it. And you can see it gives us uh, some choices here. Attack with heavy, bladed, firearm, and so on. Now if we take a look here, Agatha again has the crowbar, which is a heavy weapon. You can see it does two damage there. So we're gonna choose that. We're gonna go ahead and attack with a heavy weapon. It says you heave your weapon up and let it fall. Allow its weight to do most of the work. So we're gonna test strength and we need to get two successes. If you pass, you connect with a crushing blow, the monster suffers damage equal to the weapon. If you fail, your weapon leaves a significant hole in the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and use the strength of two to swing this and try to do two damage. So we're gonna go ahead and roll these two dice and we got there two successes. So we passed, I was expecting to have to use a clue token. So going back to the app, we're gonna go ahead and continue and we're gonna go ahead and add the two damage here to the horror and you can see it has a total of five health there. So that was the second action for Agatha. And we're gonna go back down here and we're gonna go ahead and have Father Mateo go ahead and move in here like so. He's also got a heavy weapon himself. He's got this fire extinguisher, which again does two damage. We'll go back to the app. We'll queue up the monster. We're gonna do an attack again. We're gonna attack with a heavy weapon. This time, as the creature roars and thrashes, you swing at its lower extremities. Do strength plus one. The monster suffers damage equal to your test result. So here we've got a strength of three. So we're gonna do three plus one. And then instead of doing the two damage from the weapon, we're gonna do damage equal to this. So we got two uh, damage there. Had two more damage. And that was the investigator's turn because they both moved and attacked. And so we'll go back down here and then we're gonna click on this and we're gonna end the investigator phase and the, <laughs> the AI is going to react. So the wind howls and a shiver runs down your spine. A storm is brewing, but no immediate effect. 
Interesting, first time that's happened, at least on this part of the, the game. Oh, but here we go, now the monster face. So the hunting horror moves up to three spaces to be within the range of as many investigators as possible, which doesn't have to move very far. Then it attacks each investigator within range. So the monster is able to attack, so we're gonna go ahead and select that. The creature emits an ear-piercing cry. You are uncertain whether the sound emerges from some orifice or is simply the result of its writhing claws scraping against the slate. So now each of us are going to uh, test our will. If you pass, you cover your ears and block it out. If you fail, then you suffer two face down damage and become dazed. So let's do the test then. So father here has a high will. We're gonna roll, roll five dice there. And so we've got two successes. We needed two, so he's good. Agatha has four. So she also wants two successes. She also got two successes. So we're doing okay on dice so far. So now we'll continue. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range with the highest horror rating. After all horror checks have been resolved, tap the end phase button to continue. So we're gonna go ahead and do this and we'll do this for uh, the father first. We'll do a horror check. So the creatures crying all around you suffer three face down horror. And we're gonna roll again, will to negate. It says, if you suffer one or more horror, it seems the haunting noises become physical things. Building you to the ground, you become restrained. So again, we roll the will, we're gonna roll five. We got tons of successes. So that's been done. Now we're gonna do it again for Agatha. It's gonna be slightly different now. So, well, or not. So this is gonna be the same. So we're gonna roll four for her. She got two successes, which is what we need. Uh, but we do actually, I'm sorry, we do need to turn one of these into a success because uh, we needed to prevent all three. So we're gonna use one of our clue tokens. Okay, and then we'll go down here and then we're gonna end the mythos phase. So now it's back to the investigators. So we still are dealing with this sucker here. We've got all these uh, searching and things that we want to do and also interact with this. We also don't want to take too much time uh, you know, <laughs> getting through this because things will progressively get worse. So if we take a look at the app here, we're gonna open up the monster again and see what he's at. He's got four hits. So I'm gonna go ahead and have activate uh, Father Mateo, have him go ahead and attack again. He's going to attack again with the uh, fire extinguisher with the heavy weapon. And he's going to do a test of strength two. If you pass, your swing connects and the gruesome noise of the impact makes your stomach turn. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon damage. If you fail, the appendage recoils and you miss. So we really want uh, two successes here. We're gonna roll a strength of three. And we got one success, but we want that second success because that's gonna do two damage to it and that's gonna kill it. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend the other clue token for Father Mateo. We're gonna continue. We're gonna go ahead and do the five damage. And he says, are you sure you want to discard it? Which means we killed it. He says, yep, goodbye. And so now Eugene steps out. So the monster is gone and Eugene has come out of the kitchen. So now we can interact with him. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that for a father's second action. So we're gonna tap on him and then we can say a few things. So the old man brushes himself off and tries to calm his shaken composure. You came just in time. Thank you so much for saving me. The name is Eugene. We spoke earlier. I have heard noises from the yard, but the door is locked. I think something bad is going to happen. And then you can say, you can ignore him. You can say, are you okay? You can say, where's Mr. Vanderbilt? I'm gonna say, are you okay? Because that seems nice. The butler puts on a weak smile and the two of you chat for a minute. By the end of the conversation, he seems much calmer. Please take this with you, it has always brought me luck. Gain the Lucky Rabbit's foot common item, then each investigator in the dining room and kitchen discards one whore. And we're gonna go ahead and give that to the father there since he's the one that was doing all that work, talking to the guy. So now we have used our second action there because we've attacked and then that interaction did cost us the action. So Agatha is going to interact with him. He's gonna get some more information or she's gonna get some more information. And Eugene calmly tells you what happened before you arrived. Several robed figures entered the mansion to the side door and took Mr. Vanderbilt to the yard. Soon after they arrived, I could hear them chanting. So I can say, where is that? Those ruffians took Mr. Vanderbilt to the yard. You can get through the west door of the hall, but the door's locked. Mr. Vanderbilt likely keeps the key in his weight. I'm not sure if he would want me trusting you with this. So what's gonna happen now is we're going to test our influence, but we don't know how many successes we need. So Agatha here has three influence. We're gonna roll the three dice. And we only got one success. We don't have any clue tokens, so we're gonna enter into the app. We're gonna put one success, confirm it. Probably not enough. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Vanderbilt would not like me talking about that with strangers. 
Let's try again. Let's go ahead and interact with him again. And the old man looks conflicted. He obviously wants to tell you how to access the yard, but he cannot bring himself to reveal the secrets. Where is the key? So we're gonna test again. So we've got the three influence here. We're gonna roll that. Okay, so we've got two successes. This is pretty important. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and get a third success out of it. So we get three successes. Go ahead and confirm. All right, Mr. Vanderbilt has a hidden office that he often retreats to. The door is hidden in the estate's library, which is through the north door when you get into the hall. He uses a very strange lock hidden behind a bookshelf. The butler instructs you how to open the secret door in the library, gain a clue. So that's great because we get a clue back. And now that was Agatha's second action, trying to haggle with this fella. So we'll go ahead and end the investigator phase, mythos phase. You notice too late that the ground is covered in a slick ooze. How did we miss that? The missiles event affects the investigator with the lowest observation, and that is Father Mateo. He only has two. So you struggle to keep your footing. We're gonna test agility, and we need two successes. So agility here is three. We're gonna go ahead and roll the three dice. We have two successes, so we're good. So looking at the layout here, we know we need to get up here uh, to the library and get a special key up there, so um, there's not really much else to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Father Mateo go here one action. So it's gotta go two spaces there because of the line. And then his second action is going to be able to move up here. And since we are now here, we can now try to reveal this. So we'll look back over at the app here, click on that. So the hall continues deeper into the mansion. So we're gonna go ahead and reveal that. All right, so we can see another hall here. The hall continues from the bathroom hall towards the side of the mansion. Place the hall end tile here. So we've done that. We're gonna put some two clue tokens out here and some door tokens. So moving back here, we could have uh, the father kind of use his second movement there, but I'm gonna go ahead and just leave him there. And then we're gonna go down here, we're gonna catch up Agatha, there's a one action. The second action could be to come up here like so. And that will end the investigator phase. So we'll go ahead and end investigation phase. The mythos phase will happen. A senseless chatter arises filling not just the air, but Father Mateo's mind. Father Mateo suffers two horror. So we can try to negate that. So we got will plus one. So we got six dice we're gonna roll, which should be okay. There's our two successes. So we'll go ahead and continue back to the investigator phase. And so they're both located here in this uh, central little uh, room here. So we're going to try to get access here. So we're gonna have uh, Father Mateo go here and he's going to try to explore that there. So now we have revealed the library. So we'll go ahead and place that wall tire there and then a search token and another search token. That's where we need to go because that's where the guy told us to go. Uh oh, and then a robed figure draws out a strange idol and begins chanting. Before your very eyes, a terrifying creature appears out of thin air. The cult member speaks some words to its strange leg, but the creature turns on him, tearing him to pieces before your eyes. Spawn a hunting horror, then suffer two horror and negate that with the willpower. All right, kind of going through the motions here with the father. Oh, he just barely got it. And we may move one space into the explored area. So the father's going to uh, finish that first action. So he's up here like so. And now we have a couple of options. We can try to interact and fight this creature. We could try to evade and get over here because we do know that the, uh, the bookcase over here is how we want to get the key to get outside. Uh, let's go ahead just for fun, just to show the evade check. We're gonna to try to evade. He's gonna to try to move over here and maybe interact with that. So we're gonna go ahead and try to evade this monster. So going back to the app, we're gonna click that, do this, and then we're gonna select evade. Do we wanna evade? Yeah, sure. So the creature flies in low and slams into you as you try to get away. Suffer two damage and we'll negate that with agility roll. So three agility, we're gonna to to roll that. Two damage, so I can get rid of one damage. Let's go ahead and take a little damage here. So when you take damage in this game, you're gonna draw cards off the top of either uh, sort of the brain deck and then the physical deck there. Now it'll sometimes tell you to draw it face up and the insanity has a little bit more interesting stuff that can happen. Sometimes you'll keep things up as face up as well or you'll just uh, resolve them immediately and maybe discard them. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take this one face down uh, physical damage here on the father. So he's gotta get, um, five more before he becomes wounded. If you become wounded or insane by hitting 
this target number, and then if you hit that target number again, uh, then you will be eliminated from the game. Once a player's uh, character is eliminated, then you have like one more phase to try to complete whatever the mission is, and then if you don't, then you lose. Okay, so I succeeded at the evade, but since this is my second action, I'm not gonna be able to do anything once I get in here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna go ahead and interact with that in instead. Uh, because if you do anything in this zone or try to get out of that zone, then you have to do the evade check. So I can do an evade check and then interact with something. But basically anytime you don't attack the monster, you have to do an evade check. So we'll go here and we'll interact with this fella here. We're gonna search the pile of books. And it says the scroll is marked with the orbits of the eight planets. A straight line is drawn out across them from the sun marked with today's date and the words planetary alignment. Gain a clue and then discard the search token. Okay, so now it's Agatha's turn and she gets two actions. So she could also move in here and evade and then go ahead and do that token for her second action. And so I think we're gonna go ahead and try that just to kind of keep uh, things pushing along so we can see what's in here. So she's gonna move in here and then try to evade again to continue her movement. So we're gonna pull the monster up again, attempt the evade here with Agatha. Yes, we want to evade. So now we're gonna to try to do a dexterity two check. The monster tries to grab us around our legs. If we fail, it catches you and pulls you back. Suffer one face down damage and forfeit your action. So we really wanna succeed this. So we'll go ahead and roll three for agility. So we got one success, which is not enough. So we have to take a face down damage like so. So back to the app, we've got our second action now. Uh, so we can't move anymore, so we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it pay for it. <laughs> we're gonna attack. Again, she's got the crowbar, which is the heavy weapon. It says you bring your weapon down, attempting to crush a monstrous appendage within reach, so we're gonna do strength, and we need to get two successes. So we're only gonna roll two dice here. So there are two successes, perfect. And so we're gonna do damage equal to the weapon now, as instructed by the app, so it's gonna take two damage. Apply two damage to the monster, and then that is going to be the end of the investigator phase. They both took two actions. Mythos phase. Agatha Crane has lost her way. Suddenly desperate for a familiar landmark or clue to her location, Agatha suffers two horror, and we can negate that with observation. So observation is four. We're gonna roll four dice. We need two successes, so we're good there. Now the monster is going to attack. The hunting horror moves three spaces towards investigator within range with the lowest that attacks that investigator. So lowest dexterity, or agility, excuse me. And they both have three. So in a case like that where you've got a tie or some kind of conflict, uh, it's up to you to decide. I'm gonna go ahead and have it attack uh, the father because he's got more health. So the monster attacks. The creature flies past you with maddening swiftness, suffer two damage and rolling dexterity to prevent. So we're gonna make our agility test here. Roll that. Now we have one, that's gonna negate one damage, but we can flip this one over here to negate another. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take one more extra damage there, kinda right by the seat of my pants a little bit there. Let's go ahead and take that one. Each investigator must resolve a horror check. And so we're gonna start with the father. He's gonna resolve a horror check. The creature rattles deep in its throat, then begins to speak in a clear, unambiguous words. The last words of its many victims, one after the other. Suffer three horror. Again, we can negate that with a will. So we're gonna do that. Okay, well, hmm. We're gonna suffer three horror, which we don't really want to do. We have eight, eh, I don't know. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend one of these and just take two horror. So we're gonna take these two, like so. And we're also going to resolve another horror here with Agatha. So this is similar to before, suffer three face down horror. We can negate that. If you suffer one or more, then you become restrained. So she's gonna roll four, try to prevent three. Ooh. So she's gonna suffer two. I'm gonna go ahead and take the two, but then she's also going to become restrained. So this is a temporary effect here, restrained, and it says you cannot suffer, you cannot move voluntarily. At the end of your turn, discard this card. So we basically can't move next turn. Back to the investigator phase. Well, since Agatha is restrained, I'm just gonna have her wail on the horror there. So let's go dig up the monster here. We're gonna go ahead and attack it. We're gonna hit it with the crowbar again. And then we're gonna try and do a will test. And we need two successes because we're so afraid that we can't make a good connection with our crowbar. But if we do, we'll do two damage to it. So once again, the will. Ah, so we only got one success. Uh, we could do that into a success, screw it, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna get two successes. 
And we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna get two. So we need one more hit. So I'm gonna attack again. And this time we only need one success. So Agatha's having a hard time keeping it together, but if she can focus, she got one success. So again, we can do uh, the two damage from the weapon. So we'll go ahead and add that damage there and it has been killed. So those were her two actions. Uh, she is now going to uh, discard her restrained card there so she can move a little bit next turn. And now we're going to have the father move in here. He's gonna interact with that. So we'll go ahead and do uh, the clue here and it says peering behind the bookshelf the robe figure was moving you see runic circles inscribed on the wall we'll search it you push aside the shelf to reveal the ritual circles the butler spoke of you attempt to trace them as he told you a tap to attempt the puzzle using lore and that's unfortunate because remember i gave the pocket watch uh to agatha i really want her actually to do the puzzle step so the father though has four lore which can be decent so this is one of the more basic puzzles. There's three types of puzzles and you try to basically swap these different tiles around to make a, a whole image here. And I'm really going to try not to uh, embarrass myself. <laughs> okay, so this first one here should be pretty easy, okay. And the next one here over on the right, connect that one. And I already see where I screwed up because uh, I can see the hand. And let's see here. There, I've already messed up. <laughs> and we'll leave this one down here. Go ahead and close it. Now, worth noting, uh, you could spend a clue token to take an additional step, but I'm not gonna do that just yet. So that will end there, the father's turn. So we'll end the investigator phase, moving into the mythos phase, which was a clue. Uh, this stress of this investigation is mounting beyond common tolerance. The mythos event affects the investigator with the lowest will. Your mind is unbalanced. So we've got this test strength two. So, Agatha has the lowest will. She needs two successes on two. She got one, that's it. So she failed, so violent laughter leads to gripping your torso tightly and rocking. Suffer one damage and become restrained again. A robe figure bursts in the entrance and yells, there's someone here, get rid of them. Spawn a cultist. So we've got the cultist here, he's coming in the front door. And it says the cultist moves up to two spaces to be within range as many investigators as possible, then it attacks each investigator within range. So it's gonna move up here, one, two. And so when the app says within range, it must be within three spaces, so he can get uh, a bead on Agatha there. So we're gonna select the monster attacks. The cultist mumbles a dark chant. You feel something writhing within your skin, opening old wounds. Suffer one face down damage, strength minus one, then flip one damage face up. So she's only got a strength of two, uh, so it's going to put her down to one die. You always roll at least one die. So, oh, she does block that, but we have to take a damage and turn her face up. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. And this one says, no additional effect. Flip this card face down. Coolio. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against it. Let's just do Agatha while we're at it. Confirm. Cultist smiles at you almost pleasantly, teeth rotting, suffer face down horror. So we're going to try to negate that. And she succeeds. Now we'll go ahead and do the horror check for the father. So he's got five, so he's good too. Now we're done with the mythos phase, back to the investigator phase. Okay, so Agatha can't do anything because she's restrained again. She can't attack the cultist because she doesn't have a ranged weapon. So she's pretty much useless there. So she's not gonna do much. I'm gonna go ahead and have the father uh, while Agatha's sort of distracting the cultist, try to do that puzzle again. Now we're gonna do lore again which again is four. So go ahead and move this down here, this over there. That's two steps. And what's next? One more step, one more step. That's four moves. Could spend a clue token to get an extra move out of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I think I made a mistake, <laughs> so that's all right. So we're gonna close that. And then we're gonna now go back to it we're gonna attempt it again. We've used that clue token. And we're gonna go back down here, move this one down, move this one down, do that one. So close. And that's the last move there. So that's the end basically of our investigator phase. So we're gonna kill that off. The mythos phase is gonna happen. The hairs on the back of Father Mateo's neck stand on end. He spins around as a harsh voice calls his name, but there's no one there. He suffers two horror hits. 